Electoral College enforces the principle of federalism, that is to say state power. What the Electoral College does in essence is force presidential candidates to compete in individual states, to learn about the interests of the various states, to build those concerns into their platform. It prevents the candidates from campaigning only in the large media markets, which is what would happen if we got rid of the Electoral College. The Electoral College is a constitutional mandate on how we choose the President of the United States. How does it function? That's where it starts to get kind of interesting and complicated. On the ballot, looks like people are voting directly for the President or the Vice President. They aren't. Instead of just choosing them by popular vote throughout the country, each state has a number of electoral votes then whoever wins the plurality in that state gets all the electoral votes. And then whoever then has a majority of the electoral votes becomes president. The Electoral College is a quirky system to be sure. Very few nations of the world have anything like it. Generally speaking, nations rely on direct popular election to choose their national leaders, their presidents, their prime ministers. The American people, to the extent that they understand the Electoral College, they view it as a weird device. Even my fellow political scientists often have a hard time understanding it, and I do too. <laughs> Those electors go to the Electoral College and cast their vote for the winner of the popular vote in their state. I was elector in 2004. The people in my community voted overwhelmingly Democratic. In the state of Connecticut, that was Carrie and Edwards. So it was the Democratic Party electors that went forward to cast their votes. If the United States is a country both of people and of states, then the Electoral College is a better gauge of that national opinion than it would be if it was simply a popular vote.